Nebraska Forest Service, uh, specifically our forest products unit, everything that we do is looking at developing markets for woody biomass um, with the goals of having healthier forests and stronger rural economies. So we started working with the researchers in animal science uh, several years ago. We had seen that biochar being fed to cows um, was happening in other countries and we wanted to investigate what that might look like in the United States and the Nebraska Forest Service is part of the university and so it was easy for us to just walk on over to animal science and approach them with this idea and luckily they were really receptive because we have um, some land management where if we could sustainably reuse that wood waste that we're pulling off of either private lands or public forests and use that to make biochar, uh, that's a better use of that than just burning the wood waste. And so we're looking at using it uh, for cattle. The Penn Amendment trial is, um, we're looking to see what uh, biochar is doing as a top surface layer on the feedlot pen um, in terms of manure and nitrogen capture and nutrient capture. And so um, those cattle are on a fish finishing diet, regular finishing diet. We have uh, five pens of biochar, five pens of control, uh, looking to see if there's any impact on that manure at the end of the trial when we uh, remove it all from the pens and then uh, do nutrient analysis on it. And we're really hoping to capture more nitrogen in the manure. So with these feedlot diets, uh, there is some nitrogen in that manure, which is quite valuable as a crop fertilizer. Uh, but with um, windy, high temperatures, things like that, a lot of that will volatilize as ammonia off of the pin surface before the cattle are done and we're able to clean those pins. And so different uh, pin amendments have been used in the past or researched in the past to try and capture some of that nitrogen as well as other nutrients such as phosphorus or potassium. And so we're looking at biochar as a source of carbon that could be used to uh, capture a lot of that nitrogen in the manure and hoping uh, that that increases the fertilizer value of the manure. For the research purposes, we want to get a very good um, measure of how much biochar we're putting out on the pin surface. So what we do is we actually uh, put it into a feed truck that has a scale on it, so we're able to get an accurate weight and then weigh it out into a skid steer bucket. We have fairly small pins since we're a research uh, feedlot instead of a commercial. Um, but then with the skid steer bucket, we're able to just very, uh, carefully kind of dump it out in an even fashion over the uh, pin surface and get a fairly good coating of biochar out on that pin surface. Temperature really has an effect on how much nitrogen volatilizes off of a feedlot pin surface. And so we did one uh, feedlot trial over the winter months. And then the second trial, we would have started at the end of June. And those calves will go through the fall um, and into the early winter months to see if a uh, season has an effect on uh, how the pin amendment works. We haven't seen the cattle have any adverse reactions to that. They certainly um, don't seem to have any problem walking in the pins after we spread the biochar and within a few days it's really mixed down into the, the manure and soil and you can't see it as much. For the feeding trials, corn is a major component of the diet and so we just replace 1% of the diet, the corn in the diet, with the biochar. And so at the time of feeding, feed truck goes and gets each of the ingredients from our feed mill and then um, for the treatment with biochar, one additional ingredient that they just load onto the feed truck then is the biochar. And those cattle are paired in groups of a control and a biochar diet. And then those two pairs rotate through our uh, UNL methane barn to measure a uh, emis well, emission barn to measure CO2 and uh, methane emissions. Um, they're in there for a five day feeding period, at which point they come back out and are, and are reintroduced back into their feedlot pens and they remi remain on their same diets throughout that period. They'll do two um, rotations through the methane barns. And so we have um, the biochar and controls which remain on biochar throughout their grower and their finisher and the controls as well. For a feeding standpoint, you know, we wondered if it would be palatable, if it would uh, affect intake at all, and we have not seen that at all. Um, intakes are basically the same for the control and the biochar. We did another study, a digestibility study, so smaller, only six animals, but really looking at intense measurements of digestibility and saw very similar digestibility of the diets with and without biochar. So from that um, standpoint, we have not seen any negative impacts of uh, feeding biochar or spreading it out on the pins. The biochar that is being used in the uh, feedlot pens 
was sourced from a producer located in north central Nebraska, and it came in quite large particle sizes. That biochar is being made from eastern red cedar primarily. Um, the producer uses the brushy parts of the eastern red cedar tree and makes biochar with that. Part of the reason we are interested in using that larger chunk biochar is to see if the animals, when they're walking over it, if it would break down in size or if it would just get pushed into the, the mud. Because making biochar into smaller pieces requires more work. The biochar that's being used in the feed studies came from a producer who used to be located in Nebraska and has relocated to Wyoming to be closer to the feed stock. And that biochar is being made from ponderosa pine. Moving forward with this, we would love to see uh, biochar be more widely accepted in multiple industries and in a number of ways. So one of the big hurdles we have with the feeding trials is that biochar is not currently an approved feed additive. With biochar, we did have to get special FDA approval in order to feed biochar to cattle. It is currently not FDA approved, um, and so we got what's called a food use authorization, which basically um, we very carefully characterized the exact biochar that we would be using um, and did some tests on it to show that it doesn't have um, contaminants, heavy metals, dioxins, furans, that type of thing in it. Um, and characterized exactly what type of um, wood waste it was being made from. Biochar in general could be made from many different things. Um, and so we were very careful about what this biochar was made from and then uh, got uh, approval then to feed this biochar to the cattle. Uh, further research is, is going to be needed Going forward, we'd really like uh, to look at monensin. So rumensin is Alanco's trade name for monensin. Um, it's a common feed additive fed to most uh, feedlot cattle, and it actually has some impact on methane emissions. And so we would like to look at the interaction with and without uh, rumensin in the diet, if that has any um, interaction with feeding biochar as well as just other diets, right? With or without distiller's grains, um, different inclusion levels of forage, different types of forage, maybe making the biochar out of different things or a little bit different processing of the biochar to have different particle sizes, different surface area. There's a lot of potential here to look at. This is really just the beginning of did the biochar that we have right now work or not? And then fine tuning things in the future um, to look at better, um, application of biochar, both in the cattle diets as well as a pin amendment. It's important to note that we're seeing biochar as kind of this up and coming industry. So right now it's pretty small and there are a number of producers in Nebraska and in the Midwest, but we definitely need uh, research and development for applications of biochar that are high value. Uh, to see that industry grow. Trials have been done on biochar and its use in traditional row crop systems, uh, but looking at things like the cattle industry and whether that's feeding or the feedlot pens and manure management, we see that as a really promising avenue uh, in this part of the world to get biochar utilized and kind of have this win-win scenario for both uh, forestry and the agricultural industries.